Alright guys, so let's see if I can remember how to cast this game. Age of Empires 3 is definitely <laughs> something that I haven't casted in a while. Wow, Gaia, you are you are very zoom. Much, much dislike for the zoom. I don't okay, let's zoom him back out again because <laughs> nobody can play like that, right? Absolutely not. How <laughs> splendid, look at that. What a what an excellent improvement. Yes, uh for, for those of you who don't, you know, from a competitive standpoint at least, uh, you, you can see more of the map like this. Like, you've got more visual information on screen, you're going to see raids sooner. Um, I'm surprised that Gaia doesn't actually use that. But yes, Gaia, this is the king of second place himself. Literally, I'm not even joking here, has came second in every major Age of Empires 3 event ever hosted, ever. Well, you know, the, the most, kind of the recent events. Like, we're not talking about the WCGs hosted back in... 2007 and whatever, but, you know, uh, PK Clan Tournament 1, uh, he came second, uh, PK Clan Tournament 2, I, I don't think he did come second, but he definitely did come second in uh, PK Clan Tournament 3 and 4, and I believe uh, somebody, was a good speed, somebody else hosted the tournament which he came second in, so this guy just, you know, just, just not his day on those days, uh, it just seems to come second quite a lot, but definitely a very formidable player, and of course, playing as the Ottoman, a... Wow. A very formidable civilization as well. And uh, as you can see, collecting up all of his crates there. Actually, yeah, all of his crates. This is why you always come second, guy. You don't need that 100 wood in your inventory. You need 100 for your house, 200 for your trading post. Which, by the way, of course, he builds, he builds this uh, first because you want that up. You get the XP from the trade trav voice man, which is already passed. It means you get your three villagers, which are already on the way. Of course, those wouldn't be on the way right now if, uh, if he'd built it in his own base where the trait, you know, it'd have to still be waiting for the XP, still be waiting, anyway, we saw this in the game that I put up on my channel previously, the, the most recent video, aside from this one, of course, where actually I went 1v1 against an expert bot AI, and I gave it a 100% handicap, so, I, you know, I don't know why I talk about the Travois man so much, so we all know about him, but yes, three villagers has now just arrived for Gaia, a very strong civilization indeed, and we'll take a look at what he's up to in just a moment, but let's introduce our opponent, Blackstar OP, in the south of the map, in the color green, playing, of course, as Russia, now sending distributivism. I hope I pronounced that correctly. 1.25 wood per second. The next best thing to a villager shipment. Of course, Russia don't get villager shipments, as we all know. But, yes, he is, this guy right here, probably one of the best players in the game currently. Just coming across a 140 food treasure. Not too bad at all. At all, no. Uh, he has, I believe he's probably just waiting for his crack shot. But uh, found 70 XP so far, 30 coin and 40 coin. And he's now going to go for a 140 food treasure. This is really, really nice, especially since he's playing as Russia, where you only have the one scouting unit, and finding treasures like these is actually quite difficult. A 60 food treasure there as well. Blackstar rolling into food, going to be aging up super quickly. That is really, really nice for him, especially up against an Ottoman opponent who is, uh, you know, a very good player, but also Ottoman is just a very good civilization, and you kind of need all the help you can get, I suppose, especially, you know, kind of getting up to colonial age quicker is definitely very, very useful. Really, really nice treasure there. But Blackstar is uh, probably the best player in the game currently. And I, I hold, I stand by that. I, I, I genuinely do. Because, you know, you know, you've got your good players. You've got, uh, I don't know, Fluky, Samwise12, I Am Grunt, H2O, Goodspeed. All of these people who are really good at the game and still are. But, uh, you know, they're kind of out of practice. They, they haven't played in a while. Yes, they might. Some of those people I mentioned may be better than Blackstar if they got back into the game or were better than Blackstar in their prime. But at the moment, they, they're not so good. They'd probably be a bit rusty. I mean, sure, they'd probably get it back quite quickly if they started playing, but they're not good at the moment. Blackstar is in his prime. He's a very, very strong player, and right now he is, you know, in shape. He's actually quite good at the game right now, and, uh, oh, just picking up the 60 food, but it's not gonna matter so much now, because obviously he's already got the Quartermaster age up in queue, and, uh, if you, you know, it's best to get the food treasures before you age up, because, uh, you know, because then they can actually help you age up a bit quicker. So, uh, maybe some of that waiting around time for his crack shot, 
could have been used scouting and maybe he'd have found the 60 food treasure and maybe he could have got both before he aged up. Who knows? It doesn't really matter that much. But now transitioning, of course, the villagers over to wood. Going up with the 14 settler age up. Going to be quite aggressive this game. I see a foundation on the floor, a blockhouse looking to be aggressive, perhaps. I do actually quite like this, especially considering... Uh the resources he's collecting so he's already got his foundation down as you can see there and he's still going to continue to collect wood where a lot of players might not bother they, they just get enough wood for the blockhouse of course and then switch everyone back primarily to food but have a couple on gold to sustain musketeer production here but by the looks of it is going to go with strelitz now uh, that that is definitely something I quite like. Uh, okay, well, Ottoman. Okay, they're a fairly aggressive civilization in the colonial age. They're, they're not actually as fast as everyone seems to think that they are. Since uh, a lot of Ottoman players, when they are having a colonial agenda, they will send 700 gold, 600 gold, and mass abbas guns before they attack you. So you know, it's not actually as fast as you seem to think it is. But um, you still need to get your units out quickly, right? You're going up with 14 villagers here, getting your block down, house down. Uh, you're going to be able to send that first home city shipment a bit sooner when you hit up to Cologne. You're going to get those military units out a bit quicker. Getting your units out on time, ready for when the Ottoman push in, is definitely important. So I'm, I quite like this 14 villager age being aggressive. And even if your opponent doesn't uh, go up with a colonial agenda, which is by the looks of it what Blackstar is scouting here. He's found a tower that obviously indicates the opponent's aged up with 200 gold. And he's, gonna, he's just going to siege this down and try and get as much damage on the outpost. Because it actually takes either times 2 or times 4 damage damage during construction. I'm not sure which. It's actually a huge amount of damage it takes. And this explorer is going to do a significant portion of damage. So this is really nice that he's found this. He's scouted what his opponent's going to do. You know, and even if it was a colonial, this is nice. And even though now he knows it's not a colonial agenda, this is also nice. Of course, Strelitz and Cossacks are... You know, they're good against... Um, uh, this, early units are still good against someone in a fortress age because you can use those to harass their villagers, maybe even kill one, definitely force them into the town center, meaning they'll have less resources, meaning their fortress age army is going to be weaker since they're not going to be able to train as many. You might even be able to kill a house, and that's really problematic. And, of course, there's a trading post over here. You know, he, he built this as his very first trading post. You could siege that down with the units. That's definitely something you could do. But, uh, yes, I uh, quite like the units that he is training. And uh, steel traps going up as well. Oh, okay, he must have added a market in transition and got his hunting dogs and steel traps. I really like this as well. Of course, it, obviously getting the market up in age one, the very first thing you do is better, but um, it does kind of slow you down to colonial, whereas getting it in transition like this uh, means that this isn't going to sacrifice the speed at which his first shipment arrives, which is just right now, since you still go up to colonial on a 14 villager age, you get up pretty quick. It means you can still get these units out quickly since you've aged up earlier. You can still be aggressive, and uh, the longer the game goes on, really, that those that hunting dogs and steel traps is just going to help him out there so that is really really nice but as we know Gaia gone up with the fast fortress aged with a tower and 200 coin and um, I keep switching between the two players here. Yeah, he's in 700 gold as his first shipment. That 700 plus the 200 is 900. I believe, yes, he found a 50 gold treasure as well, as you can see. And uh, that's basically all of the gold he needed to age up. And then all he had to do was leave every single villager on food. And as you can see, he's already a quarter way aged with the scout 4-4 cavalry. Really, really nice. Blackstar here, though, going to capitalize on the fact that he managed to get some early damage on that tower here. Going to take the tower out. Of course, it's going to be a little bit easier because it was already damaged. And instead of just letting your opponent heal it back up uh, by repairing it, he's just going to take it out here. Of course, oh, nice. Trying to micro, trying to bring that cavalier back. Of course, it's taken some damage, and if you take it out, keep it alive, then the tower and the town center will retarget on something else. But uh, actually here, I think what Blackstar thinks he's doing is stopping his opponent from gathering food, which he kind of was, uh, but also coin, which is not true. I mean, that coin mine was next to the tower. It was definitely a place Gaia could have been collecting coin, but he was on the back there, and he only had, uh, if we switch over to Gaia, you can can see he only had these in the town center only seven in there so that's really efficient he had every other villager collecting only seven in the town center seven is all you're really going to need to actually dump to two hit a strelet if you have 10 in the town center yes you're still two hit a strelet but on the first shot you do way more damage than half so if that makes sense there is that but now we see uh, some more units from black star hitting the board he now has a mass of 15 strelets so he must have sent uh, you know trained another 10 strelets and uh oh 700 wood so this is not quite as aggressive he's, he's making up for the fact that he knows his opponent's going up to the fortress age. He's, instead of sending, you know, well, five Cossacks like he did and then following it up with another military to keep the pressure up, he's actually going to invest more in his economy, more into the late game of the colonial, get the 700 wood there. That's going to allow him to build a trading post here. It'll allow him to keep training strelets. He's actually going to add in another blockhouse there with that wood as well. 
And of course, he can get his market upgrades. He already has steel traps and all of that, blah, blah, blah. But there are other market upgrades he can get. So 700 wood, really quite nice there. It's also going to allow him to train some population slots. But uh, yes, taking out that outpost, uh, I think maybe he thought he was idling him more than he actually was. But, you know... Ultimately, the tower isn't the best thing to really be killing. Blackstar wouldn't have been that happy with a tower kill. He'd much rather be killing a house. But as you can see, Gaia has taken special care to actually place all of his houses, his production facilities, everything on the back of his town. And uh, really, Blackstar is not stupid enough to go in there behind that opponent's town center and get caught by things like four hussars popping out when you hit up, plus Minutemen, plus a bunch of units here. And actually engaging with those four hussars, they, they were kind of messing around. And Minutemen being called. This doesn't look too good. I'm really not a huge fan of this. Let's switch over to Gaia and see what he's got. Four uh, Janissaries in production right now. I'm sure if he had to get five out. Maybe he should have waited for the five Janissaries as well. Combine that with the four Hussars and the Minutemen and then attack all at once. And even better still, not have waited, uh, or sorry, have waited until the five Hussars that he is shipping had arrived. That that would have been, in my opinion, a lot stronger here. I mean, he's still going to do a decent amount of damage with these Minutemen here, as you can see, taking out these units. And Blackstar knows that he has quite a large mass, and he's actually going to tank the Minutemen because he knows his army is so well, was much bigger that he would actually have enough units to efficiently kill the Minutemen, and the Minutemen weren't really combined with enough stuff to, to do good damage here. I mean, Blackstar is still going to get pushed out of his base because we see, obviously, five Hussars about to arrive. Most of the units have gone down, but actually not so efficient, I don't think, not in terms of trading uh, trades and stuff like that. I think what would have been better is obviously aged up with four Hussars, the Red Player aged up with four Hussars. Five Hussars now hitting the board, going to go into combat with those Strelitz, and I think maybe Blackstar has just overstayed his welcome a little bit there, but certainly the full Cossacks going to come in and maybe help him escape. Actually, no, just going to sacrifice the Strelitz. Anyway, yes, he's managed to repel them, but I think the Ottoman player could have far more units on the board than he actually does right now. What he could have done is obviously those four Hussars he got when he aged up, get them out, get them to safety on the other side of his base over here or something, uh, wait for those five Janissaries to pop out, get those to safety, get his Explorer to safety, and wait for the five Hussars to pop. And as soon as they pop, I mean, sure, you're kind of letting your opponent, maybe, maybe it'd have killed this house or something, maybe it you know, siege to the town center a little bit, but, you know, wait for the five Hussars to arrive. When they arrive, bring everything in all at once, including the Minutemen, and then uh, do what he did to repel it. And I think you'd get a much more efficient trade, and the Ottoman player would have ended up with far more units on the board. That certainly would have been really, really nice. And now we see the five Hussars he aged up with going to do some raiding. Of course, Hussars are fairly good at that. But I find uh, Hussars quite an interesting choice of unit. I mean, normally your Ottoman player doesn't enjoy sending Hussars. It's, it's certainly a good shipment. I mean, it's still a thousand resources, but eight Janissaries, I think, is, is is better, especially if you can combine it with the Veterancy upgrade, which a lot of players will do when playing as Ottoman. Just spam lots of Janissaries, and then your first shipment, or even your second ship, you know, you know your first shipment's going to be eight Jans, right? But then your second shipment can be two Falconets, which against an opponent such as Russia that trains so many infantry units, that's going to be really good. But here we see an engagement going down. It looked fairly even. I mean, uh, of course, five Hussars is definitely going to be better than for Hussars, but Blackstar had his army nearby, but Gaia didn't know that. Of course, Hussars have a fairly low line of sight, and I think Gaia thought, yeah, I can kill off uh, these these four Cossacks with my five Hussars. That looks good, but then the green units turned up, and now actually, and that, that doesn't look quite so good for him, as you can see. Actually going to lose his five Hussar shipment there. It's not for free. I mean, he did manage to kill a few Cossacks with it, but ultimately not getting so much value there. Perhaps he even got caught. I mean, obviously, he was trying to raid here, trying to kill some villagers. Maybe those four Cossacks engaged him. He didn't really want to engage, but thought, okay, now that I'm engaged, I'm going to kind of have to commit to that because uh, I can't really escape. If one unit attacks a unit, it slows the entire group down and if you're trying to escape, you're going to lose some units there. You might as well fight it, but actually Blackstar's army coming in to take him out there. But five Hussars, yeah, no, going down pretty quick, not too good, but also five Hussars as a shipment, I'm not a huge fan of because eight Janissaries, and then as you can see, he's got veterancy upgrades now. You could follow it up. The uh, eight Janissaries that just arrived could have been two Falconets, and right now that would be really, really strong against what Blackstar has. Of course, Strelitz and Musketeers. There's a lot of them, therefore the area damage is good. They've also got low HP and Falconets do absolutely insane damage against infantry as we know. But uh, I think five Hussars, maybe um, Blackstar kind of forced him to send that. As you, as you know, he's got lots of Strelitz there and Strelitz are pretty good against Janissaries. You don't really want to be sending them, I suppose, but uh, I don't know. Maybe it's just that you can combine it with two Falconets and I find that really, really strong. So here we see uh, Blackstar pushing in now. He could be sieging down these buildings here. I think that's what he's going to try and do. 
guy are going to bring his janitories back. He doesn't want the houses to go down, as you can see. Kind of, you know, trying to draw, uh, to draw the aggro away from his house. Trying to force these green units to follow him. But actually taking quite a lot of shots on those janitories. I don't like this. I don't really want to see him taking so many shots. Losing a lot of janitories. As you can see, the uh, is a is very large amount of green units. I mean, Russia's units are weaker. Nor uh, are just weaker. They do cost less as well because of that. But there are still significantly more units there. And he's got the counter unit, Strelitz, which are, of course, very strong against janitories. He's going to do a lot of damage to this. I don't really like it, especially since Gaia did send his 1,000 coin, as we saw, and has now managed to collect it all up and send his Mamelukes. He knows his Mamelukes are on the way. He's just taken so many damage for, like, if, just run away. If he could escape these to somewhere else, wait for his Mamelukes to arrive and then engage, that'd be really nice. Uh, definitely be able to overpower the Russian player then, but then you do have to remember perhaps I'm being a little bit too critical. He doesn't really want to be losing his infrastructure here, because if he does, replacing these houses is just absolutely very, very difficult to do. So, uh, yes, now going to hand combat against those cavalry units there to do extra damage, but then switching back just as they retreat. Some nice micro and control from both players there in that particular instance. But ultimately, I think Blackstar just getting such a favorable engagement here. As you can see, all of those janissaries gone. Five Mamelukes on their own are definitely very strong, but uh, on their own, they're just not as good. Like, you really kind of want to combo them up with some stuff. And I think, you know, five Mamelukes is definitely... I, I, I think five Mamelukes could take on all of this and take it out but you have to remember it's not just um that this this army we're concerned about if you take a look at black star's economy black star has a 31 villager economy now sending spice trade he has hunting dogs he has steel traps his economy is going to be going quite nicely and uh, he can just retrain his units he's got more units here more units will be arriving soon or later he's actually got the stable down so oh pretty so he's now sent at this point all of his military shipments 700 gold i suppose for cavalry production and uh, now sending the spice trade to invest in his economy. And I think this next shipment will most likely be Boyars, which is going to increase the attack and hit points of various Russian units. So that's going to be really strong. And at this point, yeah, Gaia just a little bit behind in terms of the amount of units that he could have. Ultimately, I think he could have dealt with the Russian aggression a lot better than he did. He would therefore have uh, more units on the board if he had dealt with it better. As I keep saying, uh, he lost a lot of janissaries, and, and now that means that he's kind of lacking the anti-cavalry... like, the adequate am amount of, of anti-cavalry to protect the two falconets that he's now sending. And, and yes, falconets are really good, but they are only really good if you can protect them and i'm not sure if he can this just doesn't seem to be enough janissaries like only nine yeah he's got like 14 once those five there arrive but yeah I, it's just the whole point of the fast fortress is is you get up really really quick uh you recover the cost of aging up uh, obviously, it's quite expensive to spend 1,200 food and 1,000 gold on aging up. You recover that quite quickly with these insane shipments. You also get really cost-effective shipments like Falconets and stuff like that. But actually, I think a flanking maneuver coming in. We see some Hussars or Cossacks more to the point coming around the back. The Mamelu's going back to try and body block them, trying to stop the Cossacks from getting in and move them over to the side there to kind of stop them getting through. But these, yeah, obviously, these cannons doing a lot of damage to these infantry, and it's really, really nice. But if these cannons go down, you can see him focusing down the cannons. He really needs to get rid of those. They have such a high DPS. I'm really not sure who had the better trade there, come to think of it. I mean, he basically traded all of his Cossacks for two Falconets, which is uh, definitely by no means a bad decision. Certainly getting rid of the cannons means his infantry is kind of safe. But now uh, that all his cavalry is gone, it, it just kind of lost that two to Mamelukes. And, and yeah, I don't know. But ultimately, yes, Mamelukes and two Falconets is really, really strong with a little bit of anti-cavalry there. But if there was more Janissaries to defend those cannons, honestly, w and obviously if he'd used the Janissaries to defend the cannons there, I think maybe that is something you could have also done brought those of course cannons into into hand into hand combat to also stop those Cossacks getting through, then the cannons could have done a bit more damage uh, before they would have gone down. But, you know, if there were more Janissaries overall, just think how far ahead he'd be right now if that same engagement had happened. Obviously, if he did have more units there, Black Star might not have engaged and might be on the defensive a little bit more, and the game would be entirely different. So that's not really a uh, scenario worth considering. But y you get my point here. Uh, more janitories would definitely be really, really nice. Now, Ottoman player has managed to repel the aggression and has managed to push through and is now on the offensive. Of course, he had to push out with his two cannons and at some point he is the aggressor. His economy really is not that good compared to 
uh, his opponents. As we know, we see a 24 villager economy for the Ottoman player here. We see actually Minutemen being called there, I guess, to try and protect that foundation. Uh, which is, okay, that kind of makes sense, I guess. But uh, Blackstar on a 37 villager economy, as as we've looked at with the upgrades and stuff. So, yeah, but the fact that the Ottoman player's pushed in is good. He's managed to get through and do some damage. That is what he needs to do. But fighting an opponent with this kind of strength economy is going to be very, very difficult. And whether or not he'll be able to keep this aggression going. Of course, he doesn't have the economy to find him to keep it. So it's just really these units on the board that he has. Plus a few more every now and again. But Blackstar has the, you know, a real economy to actually train units with. But uh, five Mamelukes, uh, well, now four Mamelukes. One of them going down, unfortunately. Actually, it's not too bad. Some nice micro from Blackstar. You see all of these Mamelukes are fairly high hit points, except for that one on the back there. So it means he's actually been focused fire firing a particular Mameluke, which is really what you need to do to deal with them, because if you uh, do 1,500 damage, which is the amount of HP a Mameluke has, but you spread that between all of them, then they're all, all five of them are still, you know, they're all golden, they've all got their all the HP they need, uh, but if you focus one Mameluke, then you can actually kill it, so that's quite nice. But yeah, I am a little bit concerned whether Guy will be able to keep this up, I'm, I'm, I'm looking to see Gaia, uh, Blackstar really, you know, push back out, and now... Uh, anyway, he's got a better economy, and uh, often the player might struggle because of that. That is ultimately the point I'm making. Let's switch over to Blackstar, though. Or, well, we're already looking at him. I'm not actually sure. But, yes, he sent Spice Trade. I think instead of sending Spice Trade, he could have sent Boyars instead. I mean, yeah, he didn't, Spice Trade's really good and all, but uh, really, Boyars, if he'd had that active during that fight where they conflicted with the two Falconets and the five Mamelukes, that big fight, then that that's, you know, 15% more attack and hit points on various units. That is that would have been really, really good. That could have swung the fight in his favor a lot more. And uh, the 700 food that he's just sent, of course, he's sending that now because he kind of needs to catch up. He's playing catch up. He needs to make... Wow, he's gone up to Fortress. That is something I wasn't expecting. Okay, so now up to Fortress. This makes him quite vulnerable. You see now that the blue red player is just like, what? Okay, uh, I was going to go and uh, attack that house, but no, nope, now I'm going to go straight to your base because we know Blackstar has not been making any units at all. He's been investing into going up. It means his military is going to be quite weak, and, and, and Guy is going to capitalize that and just come in and, and wreak havoc here. I think, uh, you know, I find it strange. Blackstar is kind of, that is a bit concerning, because now he could potentially spiral down and lose the game from here. Um, possibly. I mean, certainly, I, I feel as if maybe he knows he perhaps should have aged up a lot sooner. He should have followed the Ottoman player up. That is definitely something possibly he could have done. I think maybe he's feeling as if that if he wants to compete for the rest of the game, he's going to need that Fortress Age tech, and if he actually wants to win, then uh, he, he needs to get up at some points, even if going up right now is not the, the kind of uh, the best decision, because obviously it does make you quite vulnerable, but you do need to get there at some point, even if, you know, he's thinking more about the long term, perhaps, than the uh, the best play in the short term. That, that, that is possible. But, you know, at the same time, I didn't feel as if his position was as dire as I was just making out. Like, I really didn't get that kind of sense. I, I really didn't think that. Um, I think, you know, I just wasn't getting those vibes. Uh, I, I think, because right now we'd have a huge amount of musketeers if he'd stayed colonial and just massed, and if that fight where he'd engaged the, the, the falconets with his Cossacks had gone better, especially if he'd sent... You know, the upgrade, was it Boyars? Then, yeah. Well, anyway, that's a different, completely, scenario here. I think what he's trying to do here is get those two Falconets out. Let's take a look at his home city. Ooh, this is very much like a, a boomy rush. The Fortress Age is pretty naff. He's got some okay stuff in here, which is good. But there's only really two meaningful shipments in here. And that is, you know, cannons, which he's now about to send. And I just don't know if there's enough anti-cavalry really there to protect them. Similar to what we were experiencing, you know, previously with the Ottoman player. It's just that... Well, you need a lot more anti-cavalry when it comes to defending cal cannons against Mamelukes. Like, Mamelukes are insane. They're, they're not just Cossacks or Hussars, they're Mamelukes. They'll just walk in there and spank the cannons down, and they don't care if they're getting attacked. Right now, though, Red does not know that there are cannons in existence, which is pretty good for him, but actually now he does. And here, uh, he's actually going to take a loss on these cannons. Actually, these but Janissary is walking towards the cannons. The Janissary is going to go into hand combat here. What is he doing? Use the Mamelukes for that. You're going to take loads of shots. That is really unnecessary perhaps i don't even perhaps he was doing that by mistake or something like maybe he, oh my word like 
Really? Like, he just sacrificed all of his Janissaries just not even to kill the two Falconers there. And we can see we've got the Veterancy upgrades on the Veteran Musks now. That cannon's still alive. Now just going down, since the Mamelukes came in here. But but he lost all his Jans. I think maybe he walked them in there by mistake. Maybe he wasn't even looking at the screen, was doing something else. Like, why would you want to take them out with the hand combat on the Janissaries? Like, if he kept the Janissaries back, just walked the Mamelukes in up to the cannons around, the, around these green musketeers, spank the cannons dead, get your Mamelukes out of there, you're completely fine. But, whoa, what a strange turn of events. This game is absolutely insane. It's just so back and forth, and I think Gaia was in a position to, to go ahead and do very well, especially since uh, Blackstar had gone up, and I think you know, going up to get the cannons uh, in combination with these musketeers wasn't, you know, a terrible idea, but I think staying colonial, as I said, he would have had a lot of units there, especially since he's only really, cannons are the only meaningful shipment there. Sure, he could send a thousand coin and ship uh, Manchu, but that, I guess that'd actually not be too bad against the, the Mamelukes. Maybe that, maybe I'm you know, criticising him too much as well, who knows. But also, yeah, Strelit combat, there's no Strelits on the board, doesn't really do anything unless you have Strelits. Uh, and other than that, they're six Aprishniks, they don't really mean anything. They're only good against villages, buildings, and they're okay against artillery, but you really want a cavalry unit that is better against, you know, is good against everything a cavalry unit should be good against, not just uh, artillery. But anyway, yeah, ultimately going up uh, for the Fortress Age and considering the shipments he had, I'm not too sure. But, you know, ultimately that was that was fine. Uh, he got his uh, two cannons out and uh, Gaia, biggest throw. Like, he was not doing so well early game, managed to catch back up. Uh, and, and then, and then threw it. It's like, oh, okay. But, <laughs> wow. So, yeah, it's it's not over yet, though. They still have fairly even score. Though These four Janissaries are doing it again, Gaia. Walking the Janissaries in. At least they're doing some fighting this time. Oh, no, no, no. They're walking again. Where are they going? Where are they going? I have no idea. Oh, dear, Gaia. It's just not your day-to-day. -day. Such a good player. But every time someone starts recording him for a tournament or a game or whatever, it just... This stuff just happens, the poor guy. Anyway, Gaia, you know, still has a fairly it's an even score. The game is definitely not over yet. It's just that now uh, he's going to have to play Age of Empires 3 properly. Uh, you know, he was playing an Ottoman Fast Fortress, which is a bit different to Age of Empires 3. You're the aggressor, you just spam units at them, and that's the way it goes. Now he has to think about, um, you know, actually playing the game, uh, because he has 25 villager economy. He's now sending Janissary combat for, you know, the later game portion. He has to think about where his next hunt is. He's got to try and secure this one here. He's got hunts here, uh, coin mine, and, and stuff like that. Whereas, you know, he also has a trading site up and... Yeah, what he did throw was was really the, the victory. I think he almost had it locked down. It was definitely possible that he could have gone ahead and won that from where he was. I mean, you just bring the, just bring the uh, Mamelukes in, spank down the cannons. If you keep all of your Janissaries alive, just think how many you'd have. Here we see a five Abbas gun shipment uh, coming in to do some damage here. I think, you know, he might be overestimating how strong his uh, Janissaries actually are. Of course, he has got Abbas guns to help here, and he can kite with them and do a lot of damage, but uh, actually, there are so many green musketeers here that these Janissaries are just going to go down. There he is, uh, going to kite with these Abbas guns and uh, not let them take too many shots so they stay alive. Shoot and then uh, run back as you can see keep maintain their range advantage and of course Blackstar isn't stupid enough to actually chase those Abbas guns down he's now going to try and get out of there so actually uh, saving this tower which does have some villages in it though not that many villages in it yeah Anyway, uh, Aprishnik's on the board. That's pretty interesting. Let's switch over to the Black Star. We see he has sent the six Aprishnik shipment. Aprishnik's uh, very good against uh, villages and buildings. They're also pretty good against artillery. I'm not actually sure if Abbas guns count as artillery or if they're actually ranged infantry. I, I think they're ranged infantry, so the uh, times uh, two damage multiplied doesn't come into effect here, but certainly going to shred through these villages. Now, uh, I'm going to go back to that analogy where I said now, our guy is playing Age of Empires 3 now, because uh, we've got well, Black Star on a 39 villager economy and uh, has a hunting dog, steel traps, a spice trade, a distributivism shipments, and he's thinking about the units he's making and his composition. Gaia now has to do that as well, except he has an 18 villager. Whoa, that's gone down. He did have a 25 villager economy, as we saw. Just needed to get some mosque upgrades and continue uh, to creating villages. Of course, he doesn't have to pay for his villages, so he doesn't look as far behind as it might sound. He does have this uh, tra stagecoach, as I pointed out. But yeah, I hope you kind of understand what I mean. Uh, if, if, you, if, you, if you do get that, please let me know in the comments. I'm really hoping that, that I can use that analogy in the future as a way to describe 
uh, what's going on. But yeah, basically he, he was doing it on 25 villagers and, and now isn't. So he's kind of losing this uh, game of Age of Empires 3. <laughs> Uh, still going with the analogy there, if you know what I mean, because uh, they're thinking about raiding and doing damage there as well. But, um, yeah, no longer an Ottoman fast fortress. But, you know, the switch over to Black Star again. Aprishnik's a very interesting unit, going to tear these down. Uh, what, is, what, what what can Gaia do then to get back into the game? Well, as we can see here, Blackstar training a lot of veteran Aprishniks. Uh, trying to raid a lot, trying to kill the villagers, and... And by the looks of it, you know, what's he getting now? Veteran Cossacks. Uh, where is his army? He doesn't really... I, th I think actually at the moment he's just sorting out his economy. He's moving a lot of villages around. He doesn't have a lot of resources incoming. Okay, now sending a thousand gold. Uh, let's see if he can make something happen with that. Of course, he is at this point ahead I would say and I think it's that 1000 gold he's going to use to try and end the game whether it be with another shipment such as Manchu perhaps he wants to make units with it and just keep spamming and then once he's managed to get the spam out he'll go in there and put an end to the game perhaps he'll make uh, some falconets with it anyway what I was saying was what can Gaia do to get back into the game well he really needed to not lose those villages but that's not really something he can change now he has lost them I think what he needs to do obviously destroy this this is a good thing to do it's out in the open it's undefended uh, that's good there's some villages down there kill those as well if he finds them keep the raids up he really needs to keep raiding as you can see here that is what he is trying to do with this mameluke he has lost his other mameluke he needs to raid he needs to kind of bring the settler count to a more even of uh, course he doesn't actually know how many settlers blackstar has but i suspect that he suspects that uh, blackstar has more than him so raiding is definitely good rebuilding this trading post uh, to get the economy rolling perhaps he wants to get a hold of uh, one of the cheyenne settlements wherever one may be uh, right here then he can get hunting uh, hunting ground upgrade and have bison at his town center so there's a number of things he can really do uh, to get back in this, and it is definitely possible. We've seen crazy stuff before from hashtag Kelhex, hashtag Azamk before. Um, but uh, it does seem unlikely, considering the score difference here. So I think ultimately... Uh, he may have thrown the game from uh, sending those Janissaries into his opponent's Falconets. Um, obviously he did because, you know, he was doing really well and then kind of lost them all. But at the same time, it may have cost him the game is, is the point I'm trying to make out here. So Gaia has a shipment available. I think he really needs to... He's already sent his 1,000 wood. I wasn't aware of that. Where is it? Uh, I was going to say suggest to him to send 1,000 wood and build a town center. Obviously, we're now playing Age of Empires 3. You've got to think about that kind of stuff. Maybe in the short term, you'd, you'd rather send, I don't know, one of these two military shipments. <laughs> He's actually spent all of these military shipments because in the short term, you're going to need more military uh, to kind of defend against Blackstar. But then in the long term, you've got to think about how many villages you actually have. And uh, if you can get the town centers up and get away with that, then in the long run, that's going to help you win. the. It's like the winning play more so than it is the the, the one that's right or correct in the moment. Now going to send Manchu, as we can see, actually going to try and maybe uh, send those. Maybe you can use them to his advantage to raid. But obviously he doesn't have a 1,000 wood shipment to build town centers with so really that is his only option uh, to send so black star what's he doing he sent a thousand gold as we know is lots of villagers queued up there ah okay he's uh he's trained lots of units well falconets as you can see with that 1000 gold um gaia is, is behind he probably knows he's behind but he's not gonna quit just yet since uh you know he doesn't want to this is this is a competitive game it, it may have been ranked and uh, he's been given no reason to quit just yet. Blackstar hasn't forced him into resigning. However, I suspect that once these units hit, that will be the win condition for Blackstar. You know, that 1,000... Now he's ready. Uh, he was just kind of setting up lethal, if you know what I mean. Uh, by with the 1000 gold getting all the units ready now he's going to come in he's, he's definitely got a very nice mass this, you know a lot of musketeers veteran us musketeers to protect the cannons with and some falconets just to, you know to really push through and is it at this point that i really think gaia is he, he now thinks ah because if he'd been left alone for the rest of you know for, for six hours solid then <laughs> not quite that long obviously but if he'd been left alone then it is possible that he'd get back into the game so there's no need to quit but now that the pressure is upon him uh, you can safely say I'm going to resign good game ah Manchu that's what he was waiting for okay so sending the Manchu just to prove to the viewers and to uh, to Blackstar that that is what he was trying to do that was his last ditch effort that was uh, you know kind of like a pride thing I often wait for my uh, last shipment or batch of units to arrive so that my score jumps back up before I quit and that might possibly be what he'd done there but thank you very much for watching everybody a really really good game there uh, so many twists and turns that uh, at first I thought Black Blackstar was winning in the early portion, and then I thought Guy was winning when he pushed out, and then Guy smashed all of his Janissaries into a bunch of Falconets, and oh, they, uh, what a game! That was that was pretty good. So.
If you enjoyed the video, do remember to press the thumbs up button. And uh, if you haven't done so already, then I would recommend subscribing so that you can see more of my content in the future. But uh, aside from that, everybody, I will see you all again next time.